Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. And let's see. I guess welcome back to school. Let's finish up the China Quad electrical discussion and then uh, we can move on to bigger and better things. The last video you saw on this topic kind of covered this end. Now we're going to talk about the ignition system. This bike obviously has a nightmare going on here. And as a matter of fact, I clipped the wires and I borrowed the end of it to kind of wire up a, um, a square plug CDI unit to the six the six socket um, double round plug, so to speak. Basically, I just converted this guy to one of these um, by stealing the um, I stole the jack the square jack from this guy here and I stole the round jack so to speak from a Kisoni CDI system that I'm using elsewhere so now let's talk about this I like to come up with the minimum um, pit bike type CDI system and let me show you exactly why. You always start your world right in the middle, right where everything has to be happy. And in this case, this CDI unit has to be happy or you're not getting a spark. Okay, that's simple. This thing's unhappy. This thing doesn't have any of these conditions met. You're not going to get a spark. All right. So given that, this is how it's wired up. Right. Blue and white wire goes to the pulser. And that wire is sitting right here. Right. And by the way, if you look at my little... Um, pit bike CDI circuit you follow it in it goes to the blue and white and the blue and white goes to this guy and this guy could have this plugged right in right and the blue and white would be going right to the right place that simple black and yellow goes to the spark coil here's the spark coil right what do I have going to it I got my uh, black and yellow, and I also have ground. See the nice green wire? There's a lot of grounds. A lot of things go to ground, right? And your spark coil, right? One side to ground, and black and yellow, right? And theoretically, out of this, right, this guy, I would smash it right into the spark plug here, and we'd be all happy. So, we got the spark, we got the pulser. Black and red. Black and red goes to um, the coil underneath the stator, which provides power. And look at this. My black and red. And you follow this, and it goes right here to black and red, which goes right to here, which is what this would plug right into. Now let's talk about the black and white wire. In my case, you can see how my black and white wire is all tied off. And left to be all alone right I have nothing hooked to it but look at all the things you could theoretically hook to it right and the reason why that is is because the black and white wire you have the on and off switch typically this one doesn't have it but a lot of time oh maybe it's this guy you got an on and off switch on the handlebars you also have the key switch right a lot of times you have neutral. If the neutral isn't satisfied, it won't let the thing spark. Sometimes you have a remote off, and by remote off, some of the China quads have that little RF button thing that you push down that turns them off. And sometimes they have a wire tether here that comes off. And if this were a garden tractor, it could have a seat switch, right? You gotta push down on the seat to make it uh, to uh, open this switch which would allow it to run so when you look at the black and white wire right you should find an open circuit once again if any of this stuff isn't happy you're not going to run the other thing I always do 
even though you can take ground for granted, but please don't. I always double check ground right on the CDI system because none of these signals matter if you don't have a reference of ground. I like to set up, where's my black probe? I got my black probe hooked to the um, directly to the green as you can see here. I also had it clipped on directly to the uh, to the bike case. Um, just it's just neater that way that way I, I know everything's hooked up together that ground all the grounds are hooked up together and now I'm checking everything against ground if you go through the trouble of doing that right as you're looking in here and putting your red probe and poking around right if I put my red probe here and once again the black ones right on ground right I'm gonna get one to two ohms Right, and you also got to allow, you know, it could be a little less than uh, 1 ohm, it could be 0.8 or 0.9. And you got to allow, like this Harbor Freight meter, it's kind of a piece of junk, so it really doesn't completely zero out. Right, you guys can see that, like it goes down to 0.9. If the battery is really good... Um, I've looked in the back of these. They don't have a little pot you could adjust to zero them out. In the olden days, there used to be a little knob to zero out the um, analog meters. But, you, you know, when you get them for free, they're crap. So, if, if you allow that it's giving you 0.9 and you see something like 1.1, 1.2, then you know you got like 0.3 ohms. Um, once again, ground to the yellow-black, which is this coil. It's, you, you know, less than an ohm, around an ohm, something like that. It depends on the coil. Uh, black and white to ground is about 120 ohms, and that's your pulse generator. Green to ground, and once again, I do recommend probing green to ground. Check it to the case and all that. It should be less than an ohm. It should be, quite honestly, a short, but once again, back to depending on your meters and your leads and how well you're scraping it into the case. I went with less than one ohm. Black and white. Remember, these are the guys that turn everything off, right? You want to see an open circuit. If you do not see an open circuit, there's no way this thing is ever going to run. So you want an open circuit. I recommend if you uh, slip a screwdriver down in the narrow end, one of those little jeweler screwdrivers, you can actually pull the pin out of the back of the connector. Uh, then you just tape it up, make sure it's floating, and your black and white's out of your problem. Black and red... There's um, the, uh, the coils beneath the stator. This one has three of them. You have a yellow, a white, and the black and red is the one that actually powers your, um, your, your stator, which, which stator powers your CDI unit. And you should have about 360 ohms there. If any of those conditions are not met, you are not going to get a spark. But you guys could also see why I like to just put my own little CDI system right onto these. You can buy the, um, the um, harness, the um, coil, and the CDI. You can buy these for, it's like a $16 set. It also comes with a little push button you put up here for turning it off. Um, as a matter of fact, that's exactly the system I'm using on the golf cart, right? I don't have a little push button. I hooked it to the on and off switch, the key switch. Um, but I used a portable pit bike uh, CDI system for the uh, golf cart, the one with the Honda TRX 200 SX motor on it. And if you guys went for that rip and romp with me a few days ago, you realize um, that it works fairly well. Um, for that one, not wanting to go too far back to the DC section, but I actually used a tractor starting relay on that one. Here's another reason why 
I like to kind of go with my own ignition systems. Off that pit bike right there is came this quasi wire harness. And this is my voltage regulator. And if you remember it from the last discussion, right? This white wire on this yellow wire, um, what the voltage regulator expects to get from that, from, from what the voltage regulator is expecting is the two stator wires to go in here. For some reason, they're running the off system into the off part of this, right? The black and white is going into an AC. And they got this yellow wire, which, quite honestly, that black and yellow should be going up to this coil. So that's, that's one of the reasons why, very frequently, I'll just... I'll just pull this off. And you know, they did a quasi-professional job with a wire connector point of view. I mean, they put all this crap on here, but it's just wired completely wrong, right? So, how do you fix th this? Quite honestly, you can't. You got to you got to kind of cut it loose and get your individual components, right? You you cut this guy out, right? And you unplug this and then you make sure that they're wired properly that's the only way you're really gonna be able to figure this out and make it do what you want to do like spark so folks I hope you guys have found uh, these videos helpful I'm sure there's gonna be questions um, and you know please ask them a lot of times, and just just quickly, like this is a 200S, and the pulse generator is located up here in the head, right? There are some wires coming out of, down here by the stator. Um, there is a black and red coming out of here. There is, I'm not positive what color the wire is for the AC. Um, for the AC to run the headlight. This does not have a battery, right? And some of these have a ground and some of these don't. It depends on the year of your 200S. But if you're looking at the wires coming out of this guy, right, the um, behind your stator, you might be going, oh man, where the hell is my pulse generator? Well, your pulse generator is up on top running off your um, your cam timing it's not running off your your crank timing it's running off your cam timing so that's one thing to note the second thing to note see I got all my nice wires here my white my yellow my black and red my blue and white my green for ground right so those are all important then some of you guys see these wires and you go crazy these wires are to tell you if you're in neutral there's typically a little dashboard here and there are also some of these interlock wires oh right and that might be why this guy is so big though they really got got the wires all screwed up but sometimes they do some interlock stuff with these guys all right so about these wires the ones that appear to be involved with the transmission I I'm not hooking them up. I never plan on hooking them up. I'll be ignoring those. These are the ones that matter to me, and these are the ones I'm going to hook up. Okay, um, one last piece, and just a, another moment about safety. Um, the way this is hooked up, right? The black and white wires all disconnected. When this thing starts, these switches, they don't work. You have no off switch, right? The only way you're going to turn it off is if you choke it out or something like that. So, this guy has an automatic transmission. If through some freak of nature your throttle sticks or something like that, it's going to take off like a bat out of hell. And... Depending on how good your brakes are and how quickly you get on them and all that other kind of stuff, it's going to want to run away. 
How could you shut it off? Well, you can flip the choke up. Hopefully that shuts it off. Um, or at least slows it down. I mean, you could grab a handful of wires and give them a quick yank. Chances are you'll disconnect something important and it'll stop running also. But, you know, like, don't put your five-year-old on them and say, oh, man, when it starts up and takes off like a bat out of hell, just grab a handful of wires and yank them out, first of all. Secondly, I'm using the switch on the gel pack to control my starter, right? Put that on there, and I turn this, right? Listen. Right? Um, I've had no trouble with blowing up these switches or anything. If you guys are doing this kind of stuff, like with a car battery, remember, you have the hydrogen fumes. It could blow up in your face. Or if you're kind of clipping it on, you want to be a little careful that you don't, like, screw this up, or you'll be out spending 30 bucks for a starter. So, um, you don't want to do that. Obviously, you don't want to smash these things together. You don't want to, you know, blow yourself up. Let's try not to get hurt. Um, this, this would be one of those interlock switches, right? I think if you pull this thing out, it would, it would shut down. I guess, uh, I guess that's so that your, your father can stand behind you, run along, and just yank that out if you're getting too far away from him. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and please get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.